to this videos? If we make 5000 likes to this video, we will implode more patriotic news. Thank you. Massive news Trump will acquire Susan Rice unmasking records from Obama Library. Judicial Watch announced that the National Security Council, NSC, on May 23, 2017, informed it by letter that the materials related with the unmasking by Obama National Security Advisor Susan Rice of the identities of any U.S. citizens associated with the Trump presidential campaign or transition team were removed government possession. The documents were transferred to the Obama Library and under the Presidential Records Act, presidential records are without access to the public for five years after an administration has left office. President of Judicial Watch, Tom Fitton said Wednesday on Fox & Friends that President Trump can obtain these records from the Obama Presidential Library because they are federal records. Fox and Friends host Steve Ducey said that the president himself could obtain the records if he were to ask for them. Yes, there are still federal records. They are under control of the National Archives and he can get them. If he needs them, then the president can conduct his official duties he can get them, subpoenas issued by Congress can get them. Special Counsel Mueller, if he decides to actually investigate real crimes like the unmasking, the illicit surveillance the leaking, he could get them if he issued subpoenas. There are options to get these records and they need to be taken because there could be elements of the records in the other agencies, but these are key White House records about what the White House was up to and that to me is important as anything else. What are your thoughts on this? Comment section below. Game changer Jeff Sessions just did something for Trump that will have Obama screaming. In yet another crackdown on Obama-era corruption, Attorney General Jeff Sessions sent out a memo Wednesday stating that the Department of Justice, DOJ, would end an Obama administration policy of directing large corporations to settle lawsuits by paying unrelated outside groups. Those payments will now go instead to either victims or the Treasury Department. Republicans had accused Eric Holder's Justice Department of creating slush funds for liberal interest groups with the practice. A.G. Sessions said of the rule change. When the federal government settles a case against a corporate wrongdoer, any settlement funds should go first to the victims and then to the American people, not to bankroll third-party special interest groups or the political friends of whoever is in power. He continued with. Unfortunately. In recent years the Department of Justice has sometimes requires or encouraged defendants to make these payments to third parties as a condition of settlement. With this directive, we are ending this practice and ensuring that settlement funds are only used to compensate victims, redress harm, and punish and deter unlawful conduct. An example of this Obama administration practice would be when Gibson Guitar Group had to donate to the Fish and Wildlife Foundation as part of an agreed settlement with the DOJ for illegally importing exotic wood. Republicans in both the House and Senate have been demanding that this practice end practically since its inception. Here's one congressman urging the corrupt policy to be put to bed. All I can say is thank God President Trump is in charge to flush out these corrupt practices. Obama and Eric Holder probably don't want people to see their legacy of corruption being dismantled, so share this story 10 million times to get the word out. Source, Liberty Writers Finally. Trump starts investigating. She's back. The spotlight is again hers. Just when you thought that she vanished into air, Hillary and her bad deeds are again under the loop. The State Department begun to scan into Clinton's supposed mishandling of classified information while she was Secretary of State. That is some bad news for her and her future. Hillary wasted her chance to become the president by running an incompetent and ineffective campaign. The media was obviously more interested in her past misdeeds as a politician than any of her proposed policies. Despite his win, Trump offered a corporation with his opponent. That was not the case however for her, where justice took her place.
Hillary was seemingly happy and was feeling a side of the fire when former FBI Director James Comey messed up the investigation into her crimes. Fox News Report The department's investigation aimed to determine whether Clinton and her closest aides violated government protocols by using her private server to receive, hold and transmit classified and top-secret government documents. The department declined to say when its inquiry began but it follows the conclusion of the FBI's probe into the matter, which did not result in any actions being taken against Clinton or any of her aides. Imagine if other believers had to strength to vote for Hillary and now there was president that is under investigation by the State Department. The investigation is fueled with actual facts now more than never. Judicial Watch's Chris Farrell told New Fox. There is no better evidence that when it comes to Hillary Clinton and her coterie, laws are for the little people. Now do you see why people were with banter, lock her up. Hillary is not so innocent as she expects. Wow! Obama spy scandal blows sky high. One Supreme Court judge just leaked the truth. You know it and I know it. Obama's NSA was not only spying on private citizens, but on the very people who stood against him and his agenda. They surveilled Senator Rand Paul, Donald Trump, General Flynn and other high-ranking figures in this government and abroad. Yes, we know they did. But forget about individuals for a moment. Did you know our Commander-in-Chief also spied on one of America's most sacred institutions? This afternoon on Fox News Channel, Judge Andrew Napolitano, a former Supreme Court judge in New Jersey, was talking about the current NSA unmasking scandal and how they've been using illegally collected metadata. Judge Napolitano then dropped one shocking bombshell. Gateway Pundit Judge Napolitano, Justice Scalia told me that he often thought the court was being surveilled and he told me that probably four or five years ago. If they had to unmask Senator Paul's name to reveal a conversation he was having with a foreign agent and the foreign agent was hostile to the United States they can do that. That's not what he's talking about. They're talking about unmasking him when he's having a conversation with his campaign manager when he's running in the Republican primary. During the discussion Judge Napolitano also said Barack Obama could be subpoenaed to testify if he viewed the unmasked intelligence. The judge went on to explain that the NSA, which has been collecting metadata since 2005, during the George W. Bush era, has begun to actually use the information they collected for nefarious purposes. Story continues below. In congressional hearings last week, both James Clapper and Sally Yates were extensively questioned about the unmasking of data from the NSA collected archives. Senator Charles Grassley, who is in charge of the investigations regarding the leaks that have been occurring in the government intelligence community since Trump won the election, grilled the former Director of National Security and the former Acting Attorney General about their knowledge of this scandal. The resounding answer was, I can't discuss that answer in this forum because of the confidential nature of the information. Let me get this straight, everything that we talk about, the employer, is open source material for the government. But everything you talk about, the employee, is confidential and redacted. Yeah dot makes total sense. Obama's previously leaked spy list just grows longer and longer, doesn't it? Who didn't he spy on? Source. Gateway Pundit Democrat organizer it is hard to reach potential Ossoff voters as they still live with their parents. A Democrat percent captain who is currently in John Ossoff's congressional campaign team has revealed lately that too many constituents are hard to reach since they are still under the same roof with their parents. Jessica Ziegler reached out to Slate explaining how Republican parents went mad at the intentional use of their children as political methods and tools for Ossoff. Last month Jessica Ziegler, a precinct captain for John Ossoff's congressional campaign, realized that reaching millennial voters was almost impossible. Young voters are often registered at their parents' address, 
and many of those parents are enraged when Democratic canvassers show up at their door. The Republican parents were the angriest people. When you are targeting their child, or heaven forbid their child might not think the same way as them, it becomes ugly. Based on these comments, it appears Ziegler is all about dividing families for petty political reasons. Take a look at Ossoff's campaign and you can easily tell it's a smokescreen created to simply piss off President Trump. It's more petty muhash resisting. The Georgia special congressional election is a notable and important one in that folks on both sides of the aisle view it as a litmus test for how the electorate will respond to the first months of the Trump presidency, the Daily Caller's Jack Crow states. We would be happy to hear your thoughts and predictions. Amazing Judge Janine makes major announcement, Fox News viewers shocked. Most TV hosts don't really support President Donald Trump. Wonder why? Liberals have put their claws on almost every network, and the mainstream media became a massive tool against the president. Things got worse during the presidential campaign, and the news were filled with lies and fake stories. President Donald Trump warned about this, and people finally understood his words. Now Judge Janine Pirro decided to speak about this and she used her show to discuss over the president's first trimester in office. Pirro agreed that the mainstream media was harsh against the president, but that didn't have any effect on the president's work. Judge Pirro said that regardless of whether people love or hate President Trump, America has never had a president like him, and that's true. Through all the ups and downs, our 45th president maintained the same uneasy relationship with the mainstream media that he says has never given him a fair chance. But Donald Trump didn't need the support of the liberal elites to win the White House. He hasn't needed it since he took office. And, if we've learned anything these past 100 days, there's no indication he'll ever bow to the establishment as he continues on his one-man quest to shake up Washington and the world, Biro said. Liberal hosts better understand this, because President Trump is the best thing that has ever happened to this country. In the first three months, the president did more than Obama ever did during his eight years in office, and everyone should know this, especially hosts like Whippy Goldberg, Joy Burr, and their co-hosts at The View. Pirro is right about everything she said, and we support her. What do you think about Pirro's comments? What will President Donald Trump do next? What's his next major task?